Hello. Um, I was doing um, a little piece on painting glasses for the online watercolour course I'm teaching. And I thought I could continue it and the painting that I started on their Zoom call and post it to YouTube. My name is Anya Devine, sorry, if you've not, um, I've got a lovely friend Rose who's helped me with my YouTube channel and she said, Anya, always say who you are before you start anything. And uh, just in case it's your first time coming to this, oh dear me, sorry. In case it's your first time watching, <laughs> I'm amazed if you're still here. Uh, just so that you have some idea of who I am and what the story is. So, you might have gathered that my technical abilities aren't fantastic. But I'm keen. I'm just going to straighten that up. Once and for all. A bit better. I'm getting a better tripod. That was another recommendation from um, my friend. Alright. So... Painting glasses in watercolour <clears throat> is the subject of this. And my name is Anya Devine. Have a look at the links below, which hopefully I'll get around to posting soon. Um, if you want to know more about me, I do a, a newsletter which I aim to bring out much more regularly than I do. But um, this year now I'm going to... Well, that's not set myself up. I, I send a, reg a regular newsletter out to anyone who's interested. Um, by email. So if you want to um, just get in touch with me using the links below, if you Google on you, Divine, you'll come up with my website if I forget to put the links in below anyway. And there's a way of getting in touch with me there by email. I feel I want to bring my hair up a little bit higher um, and across. So this is a mix of ultramarine blue. You know what I'm telling you is it's a mix of everything that's on the palette and I'm going to wipe that away again now. So I'm going to start with a clean colour. I'm using these Rosemary & Co brushes. These are actually my own brush set from Rosemary & Co. There's three of them. The, the third one is the biggest of the lot. So I've just, I'm just using those two today. Truth be told, I can't find the third one. So, mixing Ultramarine Blue and um, Cadmium Red together, I can make a colour that reads a little bit darker to anchor down the, the bottom of the jaw there. That to me looks like it needs something a bit deeper in tone because there's a lovely shard of light on that side of the jaw there. Um, that may drop down a bit lower. I'll just leave it. I didn't realise it was that runny. It's helpful to use the palette vertically so you can see the consistency of the paint as well. Like, But um, before going any further, I reckon I want to do the shadow that's beneath the lower lip there. So I'm going to mix cadmium red and sap green together in order to make a shadow colour for that area. bit more cadmium red now to do the shadow on the lip. Maybe as well go back up to the frame of the glasses now and put some alizarin crimson in. So that's alizarin crimson there. That's the colour I was kind of mostly using for the glasses. And I think I'll explain the corner and maybe the just to pull out the frame a little bit more on that side. I don't normally wear glasses, you see. These are my daughter's glasses. I just wanted to um, make it work uh, for people wanting to paint themselves who, who do wear glasses. And you know everybody on my course at the moment. I think, I, I think I'm right in saying every one of you wears glasses on the Zoom, you know, the online teaching course I'm doing. 
if you want to know more about those courses have a look at the links below um, I'll be doing another online portrait course later in the year even if we were out at lockdown fully I've been really enjoying doing that as I was saying to my friends once I do it once like uh, sorry, once I do them um, one at a time, not not run loads concurrently. I just need to remember that. I'm not running loads, I'm just running one and it overlaps for two weeks with another course. So it's been um, a little bit more hectic. And also for some of the people who are doing both, it's been a bit hectic for them too. And I wanted to be able to devote myself fully to each group. So. You know, going forward, I'm going to just keep one group at a time. So it's every six weeks or so. I have a little break of a couple of weeks in between each one. And uh, yeah, as my friend says, self-care is not a luxury. I need to keep on top of that too. And it keeps me enjoying this. I love teaching online. This isn't exactly teaching, though. This is just me continuing the picture. Um. But an interesting thing to give a go, if you've often painted yourself and you don't wear glasses, maybe stick a pair of glasses on and see what the experience is like. Because it's a, it's a whole different thing. You might end up getting a headache. <laughs> I don't know. Right, what am I doing now? Okay, so I think I need to stop the face by putting the something on here for the ear, so that for sure we know that the face stops there somewhere. And we'll do a little bit more on the nose. It's layering of shadow, as we've noticed. Little areas of tone popping up here and there. Just place them down. Mm -hmm. What a game changer it is to start make, to start painting or using color or gluing and sticking all that stuff. It has such a powerful effect on the mood for me. And I suppose the thing of two. Um, making contact with others through that. So having just had a session on Zoom with um, my friends there, it feels really um, like it's a bit of, like I said, a game changer for the day. The other thing that, that can be a game changer, I find, anyone who knows me knows, knows what I'm going to say next, is uh, swimming in the sea or the locks around here, reservoirs. And the other, th the hard, third thing I find is... Um, dancing and there's lovely online dancing there's five rhythms and movement medicine all these different things that were now possible to do from abroad because it's online so if you want to know more about those as well give me give me send me a, a message really i just feel like getting in touch with the elements like before lockdown i used to go to the forest and dance with this group who are now doing it online and I still have the memory of, um, there was a stream nearby actually, I was able to hop into the water occasionally. Just my feet like, <laughs> halfway through though, it was really nice to do that. And just to feel the forest floor under my feet, felt like really good medicine. Now I'm reminded of Make Chance Essential, Paul Klee's quote, which I really love, so that's why I'm doing a little bit more fresh brush marks here and letting the paint kind of dictate more than me controlling it all, letting the water move things. It's kind of a delicate balance between the two, like I do look closely and consider where I'm, what I'm wanting to explain and then there's a certain freedom in the laying on of the paint sometimes that means the control is, is a bit more intuitive when you go to place the colour down. So getting the two lines of the eyebrow and then something to describe the, the hair on this side I suppose would be helpful. I'm looking at the shape of the skin between the hair and the eyebrow there in order to locate the edge of the hair. Wasn't there a Calvita ad where a girl was wearing glasses and she pitched them off after eating the Calvita? If you're Irish now you'll know. I think Calvita cheese is Irish. 
she was like she was reading maybe the news or something and then she she whipped off the glasses and just reminded of that I don't know what else she did probably ate a sandwich anyway it was for Kavita cheese okay lots of more cheeses available No, what am I going to do next? I think I'm going to put on something lively for the clothes there. Just because. Blue and ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. So that there is the ultramarine blue. And this one is cerulean blue. No, it's not. The other way around. That's ultramarine. That's cerulean. And those two together, I felt like putting on there splash for the body. Maybe a bit of blue. I'm going this in the hair either. This side of the hair looks to be kind of with the, the natural light from the window that feels like there's a kind of a blue hint to things over there. And actually actually I could use something for the background too on that side. I'm gonna put some viridian green. I've only a tiny bit of viridian green left now but it looks like that. The viridian green mixed with the ultramarine blue I'm going to chance in here as a background again just because and I want to I suppose let it read as though it's nice and bright the light falling on this side shape of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll just do an indication of the background where it stops there. And I might turn the board horizontally so that something new might happen and also so that I can just push and lift and let the background paint itself a wee bit there. Maybe I fold the brush like that so that it runs more in that direction. And it's exciting to see too that other things are moving as well. Maybe I'll indicate another one looking at it on its side. I feel like I could maybe inject a little bit more shadow in the upper lip there. And in the nostril. And maybe again in the frame of the glasses. And let's see what happens when I put it back up. There we are. It's okay. Not sure really what's happening there. I think the background could merge with it in some places. And in other places it's helpful for it to be just kind of crisp. A little bit of hair sticking out there too. Oh, that ear. Some darker hair on that side. So the brown mixed with the blue gives me a darker colour. So there's something very, very good for this for the soul and for the heart, I reckon, about connecting with other people in a creative pursuit, whatever it is. Whatever it is. And um Creativity comes into all walks of life, really. I reckon that everything can benefit from a creative outlook. And, um, yeah, that's it. So every sphere of life would probably contain within it. Like, if you're a master at anything, if you've been doing anything for 25 years or more, I would say there'd be a creative element in there. You have made it your own somehow. And you'll know stuff that people coming upon the thing for the first time just won't know. You have made discoveries through virtue of practicing it again and again. It'll be yours alone. And I guess that's what creativity is, an expression of yours alone. I think the oven is still on. You know what it is? Erin put a cake in ages ago. 
I took it out, I think, and has eaten it, and the oven is still on. I could shut up now, but it definitely, and I'm going to stop anyway, I'd say fairly soon. Maybe, well, do you know, I'll turn it off because it's a shame, isn't it? I'll be back in one second. Nothing on. Nothing in it. Okay. I thought I was going to leave you there, but um, I wanted to do just something to indicate the eye on that side. And when I say something, it's helpful having glasses because you don't have to do an awful lot of detail there. You could assume that actually you don't see very much, which is really true. You don't see an awful lot going on in there behind the fog of the lens. Okay. But I do see that the eyebrow here is a touch darker than I've got it. And over on that side, it could be a touch darker there too. And as I'm doing that, I notice that then the shadow in other places can be heightened. And on the rim of the glasses, maybe here and there. But then I was going to find something inside. Yeah, so here. Just to emphasize again, the eye on that side and I was saying to my friends there that actually painting inside the glasses is kind of, or painting yourself um, glasses or no glasses means that you sometimes might need, might need to compensate um, regarding the position of the eyes. The iris, if you're looking at both irises individually, your eyes may tend to go um, in opposite directions a little bit. So. I think I might need to err on the side of bringing this iris across a little bit further than I anticipate it being in reality, so that it sits comfortably with the other eye. Let's see now. First, I'd say the shadow that's underneath to describe the socket of the eye there would be helpful. A little arc of shadow there. Darken. So with the blue and brown mixed together, I'm going to find the shadow to describe the upper eyelash line on this side. I'm noticing that it runs like that, in that direction. If I was to continue it, it would cut through the lens, cut through the frame of the glasses there, and meet the inside of the eyebrow there. So that'd be enough at the position of that. And then the corner of the eye sits below the... The outer corner of the eye seems to me to sit below the um, intersection of the eyebrow there. Maybe it's a little bit higher than the other corner, I'm not sure. And then I place the inside corner of that eye. And then it's still asleep, you know, she asked me. I kept trying to wake her though. I went up two or three times and woke her and then she fell back to sleep again. If she wants to get back into a better routine, I want her to get back into a better routine of sleeping for all of us to be on the same good for all of us to be on the same um, schedule last night she came into my room and she said mom can I open the window I love to hear the bird song it was like 2am and the birds were singing and it was lovely but like you know she'd be, she'd be in bed now into the into the afternoon you see and that's I don't think that's on right what am I doing push up and lift for the upper surface of the lower lid. So I want to stop where I imagine the upper surface of the lower lid being. And um, I'm going to place the iris, see what I think about that. Can I put it around there and the pupil there? I might actually stick the pupil in first and that might be a way for me to see clearly if the position is working or not. Oh, I've no microphone on and I bet you I'm talking too low. Sorry about that, if that's the case. It must be a bit irritating. For those of you who are new here, I do have a microphone and I'm louder normally. So stick with me. And thanks for tuning in. I do all kinds of things like this, not only portraiture, but flower painting and playing about with all kinds of materials, really. Let's 
is more as the key, I reckon, here. I think I'm getting away with it somehow. I'm going to put a little bit of green into the into the iris because that to me does read as green. So I just dried the brush there in order to lift off the colour I had put on to make it a little bit uh, lighter around the pupil again. I'm going to go for some more of the sap green to bring it up on this side. And then I'll put a bit of the red in. I'm not sure if with my glasses on I'm probably seeing, with my daughter's glasses on I'm probably seeing differently anyway, but um, I seem to be getting away with the position of the eyes, I think. And the fact that they're behind the lens as well means that there's a fogginess that's appropriate, so I don't have to define everything fully. I'm going to off the hook a wee bit there. Um, give it a touch of warmth. Oh my goodness, that's more than a touch, isn't it? <laughs> this shard of red. Just scoop it up. And I need to get myself some more paper towels because I'm just using damp and dirty paper towels here to, to press off the colour. There's something about that that I kind of like, so I'm going to leave the rest of that. A bit of touch even there too. And possibly there. Hmm, in here. cadmium red. I think when something is warm it raises being lighter, brighter. So I'm using it on the light side. I'd say I might stop there. There's probably more to do when I take my glasses off and I'd see a whole different painting. But uh, as I say when I take my daughter's glasses off. But for now I think it's okay. I think I seem to give myself a longer forehead than I actually have. Various paintings, I seem to distort myself in different ways. Which I suppose that's all part of that. <sighs> Isn't that what life's about? Distorting yourself until you kind of finely tune this diamond, clear it great altogether. All right, this is Anya Devine saying goodbye. Thanks very much for joining me. It's been lovely to have your company. And uh, I'll bring you closer. That was the other thing my friend said to do, was to let people see what happened a little bit more closely. So I'm going to hold you up closer to the painting. You can't actually see what you have. Oh, there we are. So there are the glasses. I attempted glasses. And all the way up to the top of the head. So... Yeah, that's an attempt at my own face wearing glasses. I think the mouth is a little bit funny. That's what Oscar Wilde said apparently. A portrait is something where there's something not quite right about the mouth. All right, lovely to see you. Thanks very much for joining in. Bye.